The first time I picked the bass up, I think I was around 16 years old in Bakersfield. I worked all summer long, some summer job with a friend of mine, Kip, in some shed sweating to save money to buy this bass. And I went to this place in Bakersfield called Front Porch Music. I looked up and I saw all these basses and I saw this black bass, it was an Ibanez sound gear. And I plugged it in and I played it and it had this sound. I was like, why does it sound like that? He's all, it has active pickups. This sounds like not like normal basses I've ever heard. That's it, that was the bass. I don't really consider myself a bass player because I don't pick it up thinking I, I want to play this like a bass. I wanted to come with some different like clicking and percussion style. Almost everything about bass I don't like. So maybe that's why I picked it up to try to create a different sound and a different way of playing this instrument. Doing the bass album is really pulling the notes out. The real character of the bass player that I am comes out on this bass album. Whoa, 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 whoa. So I collaborated with my singer from Stillwell, Q. We've been working together, making music for over 12 years now together. We started out working on Stillwell and it was kind of on the side. And Stick is sitting here playing guitar for six hours. Let me throw up, let me pick up the bass for a minute and doodle a couple of things. He adds something to it and I'm like, that's kind of cool. It started coming to life. He was pulling out of me all the bass, so then I started pulling out of him all the weird stuff like mouth effects, little accents in there, and trippy sounds. Rapper, hip hop, hip hop, rapper. And now you have this bass album that's really focused on bass, but there's a lot going on with a lot of cool bells and whistles. So recording was an absolute journey of nine years of recording in dressing rooms, to tour buses, hotel rooms, you name it. That was the best album. gives a different vibe. We just made it happen every day somewhere, just somehow. I think that's what created such a different flavor of every song, because we're always somewhere different doing it all the time. We're working on this song called Zib is a Bop. We're talking to Sebastian about doing a video. We were in Canada, we no budget, no nothing. Somehow we got a hold of a radio station invited some fans down. They showed up at this skate park. It was freezing. That's why we're dressed the way we were, which I mean, it was a nice change of look. Ray was playing drums, which he played drums on this track, and ended up being a really cool, gorilla-style, raw video. This time... I wanted to try as many basses as possible, from my K5 to I have some fretless basses. I had a K15 made, which the headstock's like this big. It's a 15 string bass, the neck's like this wide. It looks like this just monster bass. And I never got to use it on any corn albums because it just never really fit. Fifteen string exodus. It almost sounds like there's gonna be this big army coming, like the end of the world, and the army's coming to like kill everybody. It's not like a dark negative song. It's like one of the biggest epic songs on the whole bass house. Ray Quinta in the house. That's how you should start the song. As parts were developing, we're like, let's do a Latin style one. Ray playing like bongos on it. It sounds like this crazy Spanish Latin song. Algo cogió un parte de mí. Perdió y nunca viste. For my background, my dad being Spanish bass, this one became bass cinco. And we started getting into all these styles. So it takes you on this ride from jazz, fusion, funk, reggae. Latin blues, this instrumental album that just takes you on this ride. And I don't know if we covered everything, but we covered a lot of ground. 
Nuggie, Snuggie, Nuggie, Nuggie, the fish. That's good. Hold it, hold it. That's all the shit I listened to when you guys were doing solos. I was doing this shit. I was my just mouth. JD used to, back in the day, be a DJ, and I've heard him beatbox before. He comes in the dressing room and he just starts spitting in the mic. Step up, homie. We're out on the Rob Zombie tour. Piggy D had a P-Funk bass. It was all sparkly. And I put bass lines to it. It almost makes you want to just, like, smile when you listen to it because you can hear how fun we had doing it. Once I knew we were going to call the album, basically, I wanted to carve it into my signature bass. It's like a masterpiece bass, and I'm taking a drill. Yeah! And, just, and grinding into it, just jacking it all up. Here's my commitment. This is the title. i got to stick to it now. We took the strings and loosened them up, put my hand on there, and I'm pulling it. You can see the tension in my hand. The photo says so much. And, Sebastian shot it. He captured a moment without even a face being in there. I had a band in the early, early days. It's called Creep. And Ross Robinson was producing this at the time. I did this bass solo in the middle of the song. Back then, there was no click tracks, nothing. So I just kind of, in the middle of the song, I just started going off and just freestyling this bassing. And it came where I landed right on the end. Dun, dun, and the whole was like, yeah! Like, anyway, I'm, telling, I'm telling you, it was pure luck. It was one of those moments you can never recreate. It starts the song out, and then we go into today. But it's like an intro of something I grabbed from an old, old demo. I think corn fans can really expect to like hear something that's refreshing, new, different, that I really believe they're gonna like. It's really for people to escape into music and lose themselves rather than having to listen to lyrics. What I learned over the nine years of Q and I working together is from me playing with guitar and bass and writing books and doing this and doing that, that the most fun you're going to have is who you're built to be. I'm a bass player and there's no other way around it. it gave me closure to what I really do.